today i'm hoping you are absolutely doing great because i am doing great welcome to joy fido international my name is joy fido and today we're going to be chatting as always about things that will help us grow so you know what joy fido international is all about it's all about helping you to success or inspiring you to success i'm here to inspire as many people as possible because the whole idea is we are all here on this earth to support each other and the more support you get the more you might think in the right direction and grow so that's why i keep coming back with support and inspiration because i get lots of people emailing and phoning and thanking and saying thank you so much you made me see things I didn't see. And so now I'm seeing a lot clearer and now I'm thinking properly. And when I go into personal development, one of the things I do whenever I'm praying to God is help me to see what I don't see. Help me to open my spiritual eyes. Now, it's so important that we realize who we are. We're not just the physical that we see. There's a spiritual side of us. And so when your spiritual eyes are open, you see clearer. You see things that you never saw. So that's why I keep coming back with inspiration because my spiritual eyes are constantly opening and showing me things I, I probably didn't see the day I brought the video before. And so suddenly I see another thing. And so I have to keep coming back. So yes, inspiration is here to stay. And that's why we have so many people out there teaching us about inspiration because if when we get inspiration we keep it to ourselves it's absolutely of no use so inspiration is so important in our life that we have to share it constantly and so this is one of those days so welcome on board so what's today's topic all about um i've decided to break it down to 10 different steps 10 different steps to get rich quick and I'm using the word quick because I know majority of people out there just thinks that getting rich they want to get it so quick it has to happen now people really don't think that you know what in life I have to work hard I have to give whatever it is time to grow I have to allow things to happen as long as I'm on the right track it will come lots of us think that in order to get there in life it has to be quick well it could be quick if you do it properly so that's why today's topic is about 10 steps to get rich quick and you find that I, I I tend to talk so much about rich and getting wealthy and all of that. Um, the reason I do that is because um, there's there's a message I heard once where this person says your your experience is your ministry. Make your experience your ministry. So you see, like um, the pastors in the churches and you know politicians and. Everybody builds on what they have experienced in life. And remember, life is all about experiences. That's all there is to life. So whenever you're going through anything in life, just remind yourself it's an experience. Once you start remembering that it's an experience, your attitude to that thing will gradually change. So the experiences of life become our ministry. And why do we call it ministry? Because you can relate to it. So if you have not experienced something, you want to go and tell somebody about that thing, the person will probably say to you, and based on what are you telling me about this? What, what can you draw on that's putting you in a position to talk to me about that thing? Um, it's, it's like um, motherhood when you have children. And you get people who work in offices, and uh, maybe they're working in, in the company that they have to do things with children and you get them they'll come and they'll come and preach the theory to you theory is in a scenario where somebody's written a book it 
could have been written based on their experience but they've written a book and then this staff will go and read the book and then come and preach to a mother about something oh you know you ought to do this and you ought to do that uh, the same thing also applies with marriage as well somebody who's not been married will not come and start preaching to you about marriage so it's all about you actually experiencing something and so it's my experience I'm drawing on whenever I come to talk to you about things I draw on my experiences and that's what puts me in a position to chat with you about these things now I am the kind of person that when I experience something I don't keep it to myself and that's why you see me come back to you from time to time telling you about things I've experienced and how I overcome it so that's why I call it inspiration because when I go through something what I usually think about is if I am dealing with this thing in this case in this particular way how about somebody else how are they dealing with it would they want to have some sort of advice would they need help to overcome this scenario that they're dealing with so that's why I keep coming back to inspire you because so many people call back and they say thank you you, you actually helped me to see what I didn't see so my experience is my ministry regarding wealth regarding poverty regarding riches okay so one of the things I'm going to start with before I start going into the steps is we're still talking about our experiences and ministry no one is born poor I mean no one in my experiences of life no one was actually born poor what is wrong with all of us as a human race or as a people is our state of mind what is wrong is our state of mind our state of mind is poor and I've done a few videos about that if you go back on our channel and see the various things I do on personal de development so it's our state of mind that is poor and why did we get to that stage where we now have this state of mind that is poor there's one person on youtube whose video somebody sent to me that i listened to his videos and he also made it be clear to me his name is bob proctor and he calls mind programming so mind programming is all about from the time you were born you see things happening in a particular way i had a child with my daughter this morning and we were talking about the same thing from the day you were born you start growing up and everyone around you is doing something in a particular way and then what happens you pick it up now as you're gradually picking up because i've mentioned a few times the mind the human mind when a child is born is blank it's, they call it tabula rasa is empty and so what happens is gradually as you're growing up information starts coming in and slowly slowly it's like a sponge it sucks information it sucks experiences it sucks things and so all of this accumulation of things is what makes us who we are and so our state of mind gradually gets programmed as we're growing up and that's how he calls it i prefer to call it i actually call it um I've said a few things about brainwashing but now I prefer to call it hypnotism so we're hypnotized to think this is how things have to be and so if you look at a young child you see how excited children are and how they know no fear and how they run around and how they're exciting the Bible says as well that until you become a child it is difficult for you See the kingdom of heaven so as a child you're free you're wild and then that information starts to flow in the programming starts to come in the hypnotism starts to come in and then what happens you then you go to school and the school system does the same thing because what they don't want to see is you being able to think and so as your mind is constantly being programmed and programmed you then grow up thinking this is how things ought to be and 
that's how our state of mind has been created and that was has caused us so much poverty and pain why i like to say society hypnotizes us because they do not really want all of us to be so well off that we will not have to depend on other people i mean you look at the states especially during the election period you see how they will, and, and I'm talking across board, I'm talking, I'm, I live in the UK and then I visit Nigeria a lot. You see how the politicians will run around and they're throwing money at people so you can vote for them. And the minute you vote at them in, they're not interested in your welfare anymore. Now, if you were wise enough to carry them and say, so why are you giving me money? Why do you think I should take your money to vote you in? What are you going to offer me when you get there? What what practical things are you going to do to create a better society then we will be wise would we not we will be smart enough to query but they don't want us to query they want us to just follow as sheep and that movie i love to talk about a lot um this particular movie let me see the matrix the matrix if you have the time watch that movie that's one of my favorite movies the Matrix really clearly explains to us how society likes us to be hypnotized, to just go with the flow. You know what? Everybody's going that direction. Go that direction. The minute you stop and say, but why am I going in this direction? Why can't I just go the other way? You become bad. Once you become a square, a square design in, 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 a, in a circle hole, or, there's a way they put it. You shouldn't be a square peg in a, in, a, in, a, in a circle hole or something like that. So you're not supposed to change the shape of things. You're supposed to flow. You're supposed to tally with everybody else. You're supposed to wear this outfit. But the minute you start to change things, you become a problem. And that's where the hypnotism comes in. That's where the programming comes in. So our mindset has been programmed for generations upon generations and centuries and centuries. Now the message I'm bringing across here is, we need to snap out of this hypnotism. Because the Bible said it clearly, we should go out there and multiply. Genesis chapter one, go and read it. And read it right from the beginning all the way. Go and multiply. It's not about just go and have children. God gave us so much. And he wants us to go and play around with these things that he's given us. One thing you really must get into your way of thinking is everything that's been created on this earth came about through somebody. Somebody did it. Somebody did something. Apart from what God created, everything else was man-made. How did man make those things? Is our state of mind. So our state of mind is where everything starts from. Everything. For anything to be created, look around you. You hear about innovators. People who innovated this and innovated that. You hear people say, I got a brainwave while I was taking my shower. I was sleeping and I had a dream and I got the answer to my problem. Everything that's ever been started from the mind. So if we want to change anything about ourselves, our mind is where the solution is. And so I'm going to really, really try and chat with you about how we can harness this power of our mind. And because my kind of person, when I get to understand something, I don't keep it to myself. I share it. And that's why I keep coming back. Because in as much as personally, I know I haven't acquired the kind of wealth status I would have wanted in life, I don't feel it's a problem. Because I'm working towards it. I'm working towards it. And one thing I want all of us to understand is, there is no human being physically living, breathing, and alive that ever says they've got enough. Nobody ever has enough. I mean, look at Donald Trump in, in, in the US. 
he's been in property, he's acquired whatever billions he could acquire, he's done so well in his business, but he still went fighting for the highest office in the land. Anthony Robbins, this huge man, motivational speaker, he is constantly out there organizing workshop upon workshop. People pay thousands to be at Anthony uh, Robbins workshop. But he hasn't stopped. He hasn't said, you know what, I've done enough. Let me go sit at home and do nothing. For as long as you're living, I say it is not over until it's over. So you're not meant to say to yourself, it's hard, I can't do it. You just have to keep going. You just have to keep going. And keep going starts from the mind. I'll give you a Bible passage that's really good because I like to um, get my knowledge and my experience. I get so much inspiration from the Bible. That's my Bible. And if there was ever a book that gave you inspiration, the Bible is the first place to go. But you know what, what I find? <laughs> I find is lots of us, especially us Africans, Nigerians, and then of course Blacks, we do do the Bible. We are mostly Christians. We worship. Yes. But do we really take the message from God? Do we really take the message from the Bible? Do we really act on the words of God? These are the things I want us to start looking at. Let's speak with God. Let's hear God. Let's allow him to talk to us. It's all in our mind. And one of the passages I, I read about is in Proverbs chapter 4, um, verses 18 to 23. It says there, one of the, the, the passage there, say, one of the verses says, Guard your heart, everything flows from it. So I didn't want to read the whole thing, but I just want you to start looking and listening guard your heart because that's where everything flows from so whatever you're going to be on this earth starts from your heart and so if your state of mind is not ready if you're not thinking if you're not aligning yourself to know what god says and you're not working on it like he said to you go and multiply and you think no i have to sit at home and do nothing and then i'll get rich that will not happen. So, start guarding your heart, allowing God to flow through you, so you know what you need to do to change your life. It's about changing our lives for the better. And now, I've been able to sit back and break it down. But one of the best books that I keep talking about that's helped me is Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill. And one of the other one I read some time ago, still reading, I never lose my books, is Mind Power. This one is John Quixote. All of them are talking about the mind. So, if everything we are flows from the mind, why are we not harnessing our mind? Why do we not think our mind is the first place to go and look into? Something very interesting now happened to me or I thought about you know when you speak to anybody that says things are not happening the way they want it they say to you um because I don't have money that's always the answer because I don't have money that's why I can't do anything ask anybody first thing because I don't have money now let me explain something to you you see people who win lottery lottery they, they they get millions when they are, when they get all this money watch any lottery winner very rarely do you see them turn that money into good use why because their mind is empty there is nothing in their mind and so this person who would normally come to you and say because I don't have money that's why I can I can pursue anything in life you give him so much money, he still ends up empty. He loses all that money in no time. 
Why? Because money is just a means of exchange. You have money, you exchange it for something. So now if you won all this lottery and all you're doing is exchanging it and exchanging it, you want to buy shoe, you buy, you want to buy a house, you buy, boom, it finishes because there was no multiplication in this money. Money was not reused. And so all he was doing was just buying. That is when you have something just fixed. But if your mind, which is the first place you should enrich, was busy, was aware of what it wants to do, had dreams, had hopes, had imagination, had visualization, when any money comes to your hand, no matter how small, you will find use for it. And that's why for me, I don't like hearing anyone say, because I don't have money. It is because you haven't trained your mind. It's because your mind is empty. So the problem is not money. The problem is your mind. And that's why you say this book that I show to you is about developing your mind. And start thinking. Like God said, you have to protect your mind because that's where it starts from. So we're still talking about because I don't have money. And why why the why have I decided to make this a major thing to talk about? When I got into the business of hair, hair training in particular, my biggest dream was to share my skill with the world so that people who were in similar situation like I was, um, I had kids, I lost my job, there was no hope, and I thought, I have two hands. Again, it started from that book, Think and Grow Rich. And I have two hands, I can do something with my hands. And so I went on, added more knowledge to my hair understanding, became really good at it, and I decided to share it in the form of training people so they can use their hands to also create wealth for themselves. And so I did that. And so I have the knowledge. And so this is a package training that I've put together to give anyone who wants to help themselves over 30 DVDs in this pack. What helps me to change my life? And so we're selling those DVDs. We're offering the training in classes we have smaller dvds that are just one one you don't have to buy the whole package and every time people call and they want to take up the training the first thing here is i don't have money it's too expensive some of those single dvds are 30 dollars sometimes we'll put them on a special offer and make it even cheaper 30 dollars is less than the price of a shoe is less than the price of hair extensions. But now, people who don't want to do anything to their life will tell you that is too much money. And then the question becomes, how are you ever going to change your life if you don't want to make changes, if you don't want to do something? So that's why I'm bringing this issue of mind poverty. Because mind poverty is you not believing that you can do something to change your life. Mind poverty is about thinking you could just sit down, do nothing, and something will happen. Because lots of people do that. Especially um, Nigeria, where I come from, I know majority of Nigerians work hard. But there are those elements that don't want to do anything, and they want to just get it quick. Hence, I'm talking about get rich quick. They want to do nothing and get rich quick and then you know what they end up doing they're going about kidnapping people they're going about defrauding people they're going about playing smart asking for bribes this they got two hands they got mind that could come up with ideas that could change their life but no how can i make it so quick and then I can show off. And then I'll drive the latest car. And I live in the biggest house. And I wear the biggest gold. So that's where the problem is. You have to start allowing your mind to do work for you. Empower yourself. It starts from the mind. And so if you don't encourage your mind to start thinking right, 
you're going to find that even with the whole solution in your face, you will not find it. And that's why I speak to God and say, open my spiritual eyes. Because you're blinded. That's what's happening. Your eyes are completely blocked from reality of what is possible around you. There's training out there for you to do in whatever field you want. But no, you still don't see it. Because all you're saying is, I don't have. I wish I could have so much money. But just like I said earlier, you can win the lottery. But because there's nothing in your mind, you will lose all that money. It's the same thing with politicians in, in Africa and Nigeria in particular. I'll keep talking about Nigeria because I just came from Nigeria and I see the state of my country and it makes me want to weep. Because we have people who find themselves in positions of power and all they want to do is just to siphon, it's just to steal, it's just to um, 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 amass so much money some person taking three billion dollars what could this person possibly do with the money in a lifetime so you take all that but you know why they do that because there's nothing in their head their mind is empty and so the only way they can acquire wealth is to steal they cannot allow their mind to think like like uh, um, um, Napoleon he will tell you think and you grow rich they cannot think and grow rich because there's nothing in their mind so the only way they can grow rich is just to continue stealing and stealing and then they can amass the wealth and of course you know what happens when people behave like that when it goes it goes it just goes because there was no depth to it it was just blank so the message here, coming here, these 10 steps I'm going to give you, is for you to allow your mind to go to work. Allow your mind to go to work. And the reason I have to keep bringing it, because um, you hear people say, but why, why should I do something when other people have already done it? I could possibly say, I'm not going to talk to you about anything because... Uh, Napoleon Hill has written about it and John Quixote has written about it and, and there are so many millions of motivational speakers out there talking about these things so why should I? No, I'll talk to you because my experience is different from their experience. I'll talk to you because you may relate to me quicker than you may relate to them. And while I may, I may be reminding myself that I need to start writing my books on topics that are my um, like I said my experience is my um, is my ministry I could be talking about my ministries and writing them in books yes I will but the reason I decide to do videos first is because I know us I know us people who do not want to grow hide under every excuse oh but I can't buy the book Oh, but I, I can't read. Oh, it's just too much trouble to read. I, I hate reading. And so when you hear people talk like that constantly, you just know that. Where is this leading? It's leading nowhere. So that's why I do videos. And yes, at the moment, we're not charging anyone for you to hear me guide you and inspire you. But time will come when I'll know what to do. So if you want to change your life, listen and act on them and work with yourself and you will change things okay so we we're looking at now the 10 steps to get rich quick i like to use that word quick because everyone wants quick things so the number one is desire desire i also call dream um desire is a wish desire you could also call it a hope and what is desire desire is you you know you want something you could call it a want as well you want something this is what you really want you really wish this could happen so you keep having this dream in your head I really wish I could 
things or whatever this is. I wish I could buy a car. I wish I could build a house. I wish I could go to school. I wish I could start my own business. I wish I could um, travel to to US or to England or to Japan or to China. Um, I wish I could um, take a holiday. And so these wishes are all there. So you, you start with that wish. Now this is where we tend to go wrong and why we're struggling to make ends meet in life. We don't have a wish. Ask most people, what is your dream? This is why some people say to young children, what do you want to be when you grow up? People say that to young people all the time. And I always used to wonder, why are you stressing this child? And yeah, it's a good thing. Because what happens is, the more you tell yourself, the more you speak it. You must speak it. And when I grow up, I want to be a movie star. When I grow up, I want to be a fashion designer. When I grow up, I want to be a musician. When I grow up, I want to be a, you know, a policeman or a policewoman. And so, you say it. Now, when you say it, so many things happen. We're going to get to all of them. But there's a first stage. So, never you sit there and not know what you want. Because that's how nature operates. And I can tell you this because, like I said, it's my ministry, it's my experience, and I know it. I came from a tiny little village that if you go back into my village now, you can count how many people have moved on and created great things. You can count how many people um, are dreaming and thinking big. I mean, I look back sometimes at where I come from, and I, I still ask myself, have these people not heard about other parts of the world? Because my people are quite happy sitting in that little village and not moving anywhere. And another thing I want to definitely bring to your knowledge is, I read this up in the Bible, and I, I really must bring it up first before we even go any further. It says, um, and this is Psalm, Psalm 90, verses 10, 12 to 4 and 14. He says, our days may come to 70 years or 80. That's when our body is strong enough to carry us. That was a big eye-opener for me. 70 or 80? That's how old the Bible has it. Go on read it. Psalm 90. Verses 10, 12, 14 is in one of those verses. Our days are 70 or 80. That's what we can handle. Look around you. These are people who just die of natural causes. These are not people who probably had an accident or, or, or became ill and got a disease or something went wrong somewhere. This is what the Bible has said about us as humans. Our days are numbered. I mean, even in, I think it's Ecclesiastics, it says, it says, there's a time to be born and a time to die. I have the person. So for all of us, there's a time to be born and a time to die. What happens in between is, is for us to deal with. So we know that this is our time, 70 or 80. So now look at your age and tell yourself, how old am I? How many more years do I have? It's reality. Let's deal with it. Yes, there are people who go over there, go up to 90, go up to 100, yes. But question is, what else do you do at, at those kind of ages? So, if you know your time limit is 80, let's say, maybe slightly over, then what are you still doing here not having a dream? What are you still doing here not having a wish? What are you, what are you still doing here not knowing what you want? That's my question to you. So you have to start with that desire. I want this. So, number one is desire. So we need to, we, we need to hold on to that desire. Hold on to it. Because when you hold on to it, that's what gives you that motivation. That's what helps you to wake up and do something. 
Because knowing that you want to be a policeman, you say, okay, what do people who are policemen, what do they require to become a policeman? You want to be a musician, what do I need to do to become a musician? Do I need, you know, it flows, yeah? But we're getting slowly there. So hold on to that desire, never let go, because the thing with nature, law of attraction, uh, I don't know if I've done a video on that, but I will do if I haven't. Law of attraction is the minute you put it out there in the universe, you attract it. It comes to you slowly. How does it come to you? Because I query it. When, when I hear something, I try to see it. I, I want to experience it. That's my kind of person. If I read up something, I say, okay, let me start with me. Let me see how I experience it. And so, law of attraction. You put something in your head, you put something in your mind, you say, this is what I want. Nature will bring it to you. And you remember that book, The Secret, and, and they did all kinds of things. That's what they were trying to say to you. The secret. Secret, secret wasn't a secret. The more you go into motivation, you find out that they just made money out of it. Fine, it's good, everybody's allowed to. It's, it's a huge pie in the world, and so we, we all have access to it. But what happened is, when you wish something, when you throw something out there into the universe, you've spoken it out. I want to be a policeman. Or I want to be a fireman. Or I want to travel to the moon. So nature hears it. There's something in our brain, if you have time, read it up. It's called RAS. Reticular. Let me look for the full name for it. RAS. Reticular activating system. So RAS is a part of our brain that what it does, and I knew about RAS from when I did a course in a personal development called Neuro Linguistic Programming. So RAS is the part of the brain that once you put something in your mind that this is what you want, what it does is as you're out there carrying on with your life, it starts to filter that thing to you. Filter it and filter it. And so if you give them the universe, I want to be a policeman, what you find is your rats will be focusing on just policemen. So every time you walk around, you say policeman, oh, that's what I wanted. Oh, look at that. I love the uniform and I love this. And so if you open a newspaper, you want to read, oh, look, they're recruiting police people. Oh, and what are they looking for? So number two is requirement. So number one, we said desire. Number two is requirement. You then say to yourself, what do I need to get that? I want to be a hairdresser. What do I need to become a hairdresser? And so you may go online and say, hairdressers training. Do you see how it works? Because you've been very clear to yourself, this is my desire, hairdresser. So everything starts from a desire. So if you haven't said clearly, I want to do this, or I have this, I want to have that, you're not going to go anywhere. And this is why I say to people who chase, I want to win a lottery, and then have all that, all that money, and they lose it all, the desire is not there. All they wanted was money. So just having physical money does not answer your questions or your problems. Because if you haven't put into concrete terms what that money would do, Money in your hand can do anything. Can buy you clothes, can buy you shoes, can buy you a dream. Can I always say to my kids, it is easy to spend money, but it's not easy to make money. So the minute that money comes to your hand, boom, you find a million things to do with it. But for it to come into your hand, that's when it becomes a job. That's when you have to work so hard. So desire, then requirement. What do I need to get that? If you were thinking of designing hair like I do, you will probably find my training useful. I want to be able to design amazing hairstyles. Yes, okay. I need to know how to do that. I need to learn how to do that. I need training where to do that. So that's where your requirement comes. Number two requirement find out what the requirement is for whatever you want to do you want to travel to japan go online how what kind of 
visas do they need to go to Japan? Okay, if it's visa, yes. What do they need for me to get that visa? And I say to people who say to me, oh yeah, but, but I wanted to do your training, but I don't have the money. Give yourself a timeline. Find out how much is required. If $30 was what you needed to buy one DVD, all you need to do is prioritize yourself. Okay, I was going to buy donuts the other day and I was going to go to the mall and eat some food that my body probably doesn't need. Or I was going to buy hair cream that I don't need right now. Or I was going to buy this shoe that is just not, I have so many shoes. So you prioritize. You take out what is not needed. And then you put that money aside. That's how it is done. You have to work with yourself. So your requirement is I need to put money down to get the training. I need to get have these things for me to get that visa. I need to have these things for me to build a house. I'm working on the things I need. And so most times when I come here and tell you things, trust me, by the time the spirit is talking through me and giving us this information, I am equally learning from me. I learn from me. But once I put it out there, it is out and so I can learn from it. If I left it inside of me, it will probably benefit just me. But of what use is me just benefiting when I can share it with the world? And that's how I come in. I like to share. I like everyone out there to learn. I like all of us to win. Because for me, um, I feel if you, if you have it, then I have it. Because we all connect one way or the other. If I'm giving you a training and you buy it, you're helping me to achieve as well. And I'm helping you to achieve by giving you the knowledge you want. So you see how it's give and take. That's what life is. You don't leave anything in one side and expect the other side to grow. No. I don't give it all in and expect you to grow. No. So if I give it to you and it's something you wanted, you use it, it helps you grow, then you give me something. And that's how the world flows. But you know the funny thing, there's a Bible passage, I don't have it written down. It says those who have, who have more. And those who don't have even the little they have will be taken away from them. There's a part of the parable of the talent where this master traveled and gave, gave his um, servants things, different talents. One was five, one was three, one was one. And then one went and dug the ground and put it in. And nothing added to it and the other one did business with it and got so much more they had to take from the one who refused to use anything and give to the one who, who had so much more because when you have you know how to give it out and when you give it out it multiplies that's what that parable is about it's about you giving out more and the more you give out the more you get but if what you want to do at all times which I find so many people out there in this world try to do is hug and keep to themselves and become stingy and don't want to share watch yourself how you grow because you you cannot be everything you one person cannot be everything so you have to give in order to receive you give something you get something because with the knowledge i'll give you and you give me something you are going to walk with that knowledge and change your life and so the little you give me to will help me do some of the things I want to do. So we give each other. That's what it's all about. So find a requirement for whatever you want to do in life. And do what is required. Do what is needed to get that thing done. Stop giving yourself excuses. But I don't have money. Which is what I told you earlier. Money has never been the problem in the world. It's our mindset. So you need to change that mindset of thinking that you don't have money because you do you do have money there are things in your life you're doing right now that you shouldn't be doing that the money you're putting there is giving you nothing and i'll give you an example i i have students who are in training or come to training with me sometimes and, and you see people like i get people tell me things like i could have come but i have four children and i have a husband who's not working and so i'm the only one who's working that happened to me 
I lost my job and I had four children and I had nothing else to do but to find a way to make my life good because I knew if I did nothing about it in future my children will be affected and I scraped and scraped and scraped so it's about scrapping because most of these people I see that tell me these stories, I see them on Facebook and wherever. And you see the amazing cars they're driving, you see the houses they live in. They do not believe in sacrifice. They feel, okay, yeah, my life will carry on normal, but I'm going to inconvenience that other person and tell her I don't have, so she can give it to me at zero price. She can give it to me free. And then I'll take from her and add on to my own. Nature doesn't work that way. Nature believes in you give and you receive. So in this life, if you want to grow, you want to make money and not be like those ones who want to do nothing and get rich, you have to give to receive. Find out the requirement and do it.